am Geraldine Taylor from Baltimore, Maryland. I am an author, fashion model, motivational speaker, mentor, and a cancer survivor. And those are titles that describe me, but I remember words like sickness, disease, cancer, ostomy, depression, suicidal thoughts, loss of self, and brokenness. At three years old, most kids are getting potty trained, getting ready for nursery school. But me, I love playing with my toys, playing with my dolls, uh, playing with my twin sister. But one day, things change drastically. I am Geraldine's oldest sister. On um, one summer day, we were out the back playing and with my other siblings. And I noticed something going on with Gerald's clothing. So I asked her, I said, did you fall? And she said, no. And I told her to come to the steps where I was. And she came to the steps and I noticed some redness that was on her shorts. But then it started increasing the redness. So I said, let's go in the house and let mama and daddy see it. When we went in the house, my mother and father looked. They took her clothes off. They discovered something was hanging from a certain area. My sister rushed me in the house, called my parents, and my parents immediately rushed me to the hospital. So they took her to the hospital, and that night I got a call, well, my aunt got a call and said that she would have to stay because there's something going on with her. So after a few days, I found out that she had had some type of cancer and she would need to have surgery. And then I felt okay. It was a little, because I was young too, I was like 13, and it still was an issue for me to know that my little sister that was, that was playing out there, things was happening to her. And it was days of testing, x-rays, MRIs, and more testing and more testing, only to discover that it was a rare form of cancer called rhabdomyositis in other words, I had vaginal cancer. She went away from us for like two months. And um, of course I was curious as to what's going on. And then my mom and them came home and they told us. So when they brought Gerald home, I noticed when my father was giving her a bath and I was in there, that there was two little pink things sticking out of her stomach. This is the way I felt. What are these two little pink things that are sticking out? A year after my diagnosis, I was cancer free, but because of where the cancer was located, I was forced to have what you call an ostomy. And an ostomy is a surgically opening in your body with a discharge of your waste. And so that's how I use the bathroom and I empty those into an ostomy bag. Again, it's two surgically openings. Um, and my urine and my bowels emptied into this ostomy bag. And so, you know, we didn't know how I was going to handle it and, you know, how to take care of myself, how I would grow up with these ostomies. And so it was pretty, pretty rough, young, being a teenager, being an adolescent, just learning how to take care of my bags, when to change my bags, how to change my bags. And so it was pretty rough. I, I try not to let anyone know, but deep down inside, it was very, very rough. My dad showed me how to bathe her, how to take care of her, how to change her bags. And um, I stepped right in. And it was no question that we had to do what we had to do to make sure she was OK. We understood that this is our sister, something's going on, but she's no different. She's no different than what we are. I remember when I first met Geraldine, it was in nursery school. We were probably about four or five years old. And it was a really difficult time because we were young. We were being separated from our families for the first time. But in particular, I remember how mean the children were towards her. And I didn't particularly know why. But as we grew and we attended classes, I kind of knew that it was something different and special about her at the same time. I remember like it was yesterday. I was in middle school and we caught the school bus to school and we were coming home and one of my bags had burst. And 
of course there was an awful awful smell on the bus and the bus driver he thought like somebody threw something on the bus and I like sat there and I knew it was me and the kids on the bus were talking and talking and like what is that smell what's going on even the bus driver stopped the bus it was like who threw something on the bus and it seemed like we were on that bus for for like seemed like hours to me but I was sitting there and I, I knew it was me and I didn't know how how to handle it and um, I ran home and uh, didn't even tell my parents you know what happened cleaned myself up and um, knew I had to go back to school the next day and uh, the kids would be still talking about it and I couldn't say anything and uh, I was just kind of lost and like I'm going back to the same question like like why me and uh, it's like what is my life going to be like it's just accidents and incidents will happen again and how would I handle it And as time grew on, we became much, much closer. Um, I realized and had come to understand that she was diagnosed with a very rare type of cancer. And through that, being around the family, I understood that it was a struggle for her throughout her educational phases in life as a young child being teased. And I just didn't understand why the anger, why the hatred. My mom taught me you know, about faith and believe in. Um, she taught me like there's a purpose like for your life, but there was gonna be a purpose through your pain. And so, you know, I, be I, I became saved um, and I started going to church and God was just like revealing things to me. You know, you're special, you know. Um, I made you a designer original, like I don't make no junk. I understand you went through what you went through, but I'm gonna show you that you are different to make a difference. I was talking about Geraldine Taylor. Geraldine has been with me the whole of my ministry. I've been here for 28 years. She's been here for 28 years. She has made tremendous strides watched her go through many ups and downs, and yet and still I watched her continue to climb. In high school, it wasn't as bad as I thought it would be. Um, of course, you meet new friends in high school, you move to another level. It's like you're leading up to graduation. And um, one thing that helped me in high school was I got involved with sports. Um, I played badminton, and I loved volleyball, so I got on the volleyball team made very, very close friends. Matter of fact, those are probably the most friends I hung around were my teammates. And while I was in high school, I actually took uh, my trade of cosmetology. I graduated and became a licensed cosmetologist. So I did that for about 17 years. Um, also got into another career by accident, but I got into hotel hospitality and to the sales. Um, did that as well. So I had kind of like two full-time jobs, but I enjoyed them both. Um, it just gave me a sense of being a career woman. I just wanted to live a normal life, so I, I'm thankful for the career that I had. But I also wanted to get into like maybe some hobbies. Um, and I got into a hobby, I call it a hobby. <laughs> At the time it was a hobby. Um, and I was like, hmm. I'm not sure if I want to try this hobby, but I was just in the mall one day and a modeling scout came to me and he's like, we're having some modeling workshop classes. Would you like to come and just listen to what we have to say? And I'm thinking in my mind, modeling and two Oscar bags. And I'm like, there's no way, you know. But I decided to go and just listen. But what I decided to do was step out of my faith and try something that I never did before. Now, I, I never grew up wanting to be a model. 
And so I said, well, let me just try it. And I even think then God was just trying to tell me something. He was trying to tell me, like, Geraldine, all things are possible. And so I started classes with the Travis Winkie Marlin Studio, and I started progressing, and it turned into a passion of mine. I had no idea she was a cancer survivor and I had no idea she had ostomy bags at all. It wasn't until uh, we were preparing for a fashion show and we were doing the fitting in the back and she let me know. And then from there it was like it opened up my eyes to a different way of living. Um, it made me think, wow, you know, um, she has to go through these particular things as being a model that I didn't see at first. Um, and then I just kind of went into protective mode. It was like, oh Oh my gosh, I wanted to make sure she was always okay. If I had to pull clothes and bring them in another room, I would just tell the designer, give me that, give me this, give me this, and, and take it to her so she can try it on. Eventually, you know, we've been, she doing photo shoots and she asked me, you know, what I'm styling for. I said, sure. So by me being the designer, you know, I would make certain things. She would send me pictures and say, can you make this for me? I'm like, sure, I sure would, no problem. When I started styling her, I never knew that she wore ostomy bags. Sherilyn has a affected my life in many different ways. Uh, as a model, I saw a model who had ostomy bags, but that didn't stop her from pursuing her dreams. I've been with Geraldine for over five years as her makeup artist, but she has been in my life for over 20 years as a friend. And we have done a lot together um, in this industry. And to be totally honest, when we first started together, I never knew she had ostomies. To my surprise, my modeling career just started progressing and started soaring. I mean, I was asked to be in fashion shows. Um, and even like a little bit later on, um, published in magazines, I mean, published in over 30 magazines and even featured on Baltimore City's largest digital billboard. I mean, on a big screen billboard. So when I look back and I see those accomplishments as a model, you know, I think back at that little girl in the backyard. It's been an amazing journey as a fashion model. Um, I'm not stopping, I'm not ready to stop. And with every door she's had set before her, she has taken her opportunities while fighting through all of her obstacles. Some setbacks, but every time she had a setback, she didn't give in and give out. She kept on striving, kept on climbing. And then through the pain of her own struggle, she's turned out to be a tremendous voice for other people going through the same kinds of things. I'm extremely proud of what Gerald has done in these days past and excited about what she's going to do. She's a wonderful, wonderful spirit and the skies are the limit for her and there is no limit to how God will bless her because she's continued to bless others' lives. If I could say something to my younger self, that three-year-old playing in the backyard without a care in the world, I would pick her up and hold her and whisper in her ear, God knows the plans for you, not to harm you, to give you hope and a good future. You are different to make a difference. Wow, Aunt Gerald, different to make a difference. As your niece slash daughter, I have a few questions to ask you. It's been three years since the documentary. How do you feel? Yes, it's been three years uh, since the documentary, Pieces of Me. I still feel very, very blessed, very, very blessed. I'm excited now more because the public gets to see. I shared before with just close friends and family, but now you all get to see. A little bit nervous, but excited to, again, um, be that voice, um, whether it's through the cancer uh, community, the ostomy community amongst family and friends, just to bring motivation and inspiration and empowerment. So I am very, very excited, very excited. Many doors has opened, many blessings since the documentary, tell us. 
there has been many blessings. Like the blessings don't stop. Even through, you know, struggles and ups and downs that I still go through, still go through. But through it all, God still been blessing me. Still features in magazines, speaking engagements, um, billboard features, just blessings on top of blessings, really. And so a lot has happened. Again, he will pull you out blessings. You will not have room enough to receive. And I'm excited that he's still using me to first glorify him and to, again, bring inspiration to others. Do you feel the pieces of your puzzle is complete? I feel the pieces are not complete. God is still putting my pieces together. He knows exactly where they should go and when. And so as he continues to give me pieces, I continue to give you all pieces of me. And so the puzzle is not complete. Your puzzle is not complete. And so, no, it's not. And I'm, I'm excited. I'm excited that he's still building me. He's still molding me. He's still giving me a story, a testimony, and a journey. And so again, as he give me the pieces, I give you the pieces. I encourage other people to tell their story because you never know you know you never know somebody's story you never know what they went through maybe somebody didn't go through cancer or somebody doesn't have an ostomy bag or whatever but somebody has gone through something My